Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. I'm the one without the cold. But without the cold, exactly. I'm, I'm hopefully on the tail end, the last few days of a week-long cold. Yeah. Not yeah. fun. Not fun. There's actually a, there's a three-year-old with a cold and a wife with a cold. So this... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know not, what it's not, like not with kids. House. They're like little petri dishes, you know, running around and <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and, and I flew to and I flew to New Jersey over the weekend, so I was stuck in a in a petri dish tube sure. for five hours yeah. with all That's sorts of fun. others coughs and hacks. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> so 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 Jay, what are we we're we're kind of revisiting we have, past Yeah, topic. we've got a returning guest. Um we had a really great chat last time, uh Ms. Christy Crowell. Um, we've talked in the past about metadata, and I think we're going to kind of revisit that a little bit today. Um, I've got a, a lot of questions. There's been a lot of progress made, a lot of developments. So welcome, Christy. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Jay? Thanks for good. having me back. Good to good see to you. Catch you up. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. So a lot of stuff has been going on, and, and you want to give us like kind of the elevator version of – you know, since the last time we talked, is the has the landscape changed? Is it any different now than it was then? Um, you know, uh, yes, I think that it's changing every week. <laughs> um, there's a lot of uh, legal things now going on with the PROs. Of course, it's like every week there's a lawsuit or there's a, a decision by the DOJ and then it's being retracted by, you know, for one PRO. So I think the music industry is just rapidly going through this um, – kind of uh, uh, acclimation to digital, yeah. which uh, yeah, it's, is it's, still it's, difficult. It's catching up to technology. Yep. And Slowly so, but surely. And, and can, <laughs> can you kind of, kind of, you know, give us the, the layman's version of, you know, why some of these things matter and, and the progress that's slowly coming along? Well, um, why some of things matter? I, I, I think the end well, actually, the creator level of data that is needed to um, progress into the chain. I think that industry happened and technology happened and left the creator kind of behind. And as a result, um, the creator's uh, uh, tools that they get to use to um, kind of participate in the digital environment were really way behind. And so there were all kinds of... Um, uh, businesses that popped up to say we can distribute, you know, to iTunes for you. But then when Spotify came along, it's like, oh, now what? Um, and then the PROs, you know, they have a very siloed um, adaption of what they can handle. And musicians at the ground level don't understand, well, that doesn't cover the serious airplay or the, um, so musicians really are caught at this they're the ones putting stuff into the market, but they don't understand who's responsible for paying them. So I think right now the industry is realizing that a little bit and saying, oh, we need to catch everybody up because if we can catch artists up, then maybe they'll be happier with us and then maybe we'll make some more money in the meantime because we can try to corral all this together. But I don't think that they've quite gotten it yet. They're, we're not there. They're not yeah. there yet. And um, is it true that, you know, the, the metadata, the, the information on, you know, Underneath these, say, the track listings, artist title, but when you get to songwriters and session people, sidemen, those kinds of things, that's fairly inconsistent across Absolutely. DSPs, right? It's, yeah, it's granular data that needs to be captured at the source. And unfortunately, right now, until we came along, um, ProMusicDB came along, there's been no repository for those types of that type of validated information, except for if it went through a union process. Um, to get the session player information. If the songwriter is registered at PRO and ASCAP, it may be up on, um, you know, if you look up that songwriter's name um, at ASCAP BMI, but that information doesn't get passed on to the DSPs at all. So it doesn't get, you know, passed on to a Spotify or a Rapsy to find out who played what, which in my view, um, perpetuates more people being on I, uh, uh, Spotify because they research, you know, their favorite songwriter or their favorite bass player or their sure. favorite drummer. Exactly. And it tracks right. a different way. Um, yeah. But I think now that 
acknowledgement is starting to come. And now there's a big push in a lot of these industry working groups that I'm participating in, you know, technology wise to get ground level data, especially yeah. now with blockchain um, being the big buzzword of the day. Sure. And I um, definitely and, want to touch on that. Yeah. But, but before <laughs> let me um, ask you about what about things like, you know, uh, DDEX and Merlin and, you know, are there any kind of standards or any anything that's standardized when it comes to those kind of big services that deliver metadata? I think DDEX is the uh, accepted standard. Um, I'm not familiar with Merlin. DDEX, I've been involved more with uh, the DDEX end of things, and we've made our, our site kind of DDEX compliant. Um I think what I, I got an acknowledgement from DDEX itself kind of in one of the working group situations this year and meeting at the OMI that they kind of acknowledge that they really left artists behind um, and that there's this now that artists are wow. becoming more independent and more a part of not that's not like an official DDEX remark. That's kind of, you know, something um, that someone within DDEX kind of said to me as, you know, they're got realizing it. now that, you know, that the implementation, like standardization is one thing. You can say this is the standard and this is the way everything should come, you know, when they're communicating digitally for digital messages about music. However, <laughs> how do you implement that with a ground level, you know, a songwriter who's just, you know, putting stuff up on, you know, iTunes or putting it onto Spotify? Yeah. How, yeah. How, how do you get that information to them? So I think now they're realizing the education that needs to take place for now the new independent artist is essentially an independent business person. You know, Absolutely. The, the minute, yeah. the minute, but it's the realization of that. Um, yeah. And I, I think that there is a, uh, in the music community as being a musician, there is this internet fairy concept of, oh, someone else takes care of that. The PROs are taking care of that. Oh, Sound Exchange does that. Or, oh, the union does that. I don't do that. Someone and else. And for those, for those that don't know, a PRO, you're talking about ASCAP, <laughs> BMI, <laughs> CSAC, whatever. Um, and then PRO uh, Irving for, Azoff's new thing, I guess. P but PRO go ahead, Michael. PRO stands for Performance Rights Organizations. Yes. So, yeah, but your point's well taken. I mean, Michael pulled up a CD last year that cracked us up, and it was from an artist that should have known better, popped a CD into a computer, and I believe there wasn't even tracks, right, Michael? No, I mean, there it, was... it, it, it had no artist name. It had no track name. It had it had nothing. They, they'd left off all of the, <laughs> the, the absolute most basic iTunes metadata. Right, we're, we're, not even talking about, I mean, we're not even talking fairy. about the granular level of what you're looking at, the most basic right. data. And, and that's, but they that's don't very know, common. Again, it's, the, it's the... Because there hasn't been the bridge. Um, basically, all these technological advances have happened, but you've left the artist who's now... You've empowered them to say, sell us your music. Directly, right. yeah. But directly. But you haven't empowered them by the what's required to sell that music. Exactly. You haven't made them a business person. You've made them a musician who can pop up a track and put it on Facebook or YouTube and get a million views. So is that your but mission to kind of I educate think probably, as well yeah, as Yes, you know, that's why I advocate? What yeah, what has changed about ProMusic DB from the last time we talked is that I really saw the need for this membership organization to evolve not a not just a database because right. um what i was hearing from a lot of colleagues was you know what's different from you than imdb or what's different from all music because that's their that's their end game you know musicians just want to be recognized so and i realized well there's it's more to it than that you know we're kind of this hybrid between having this credits database, but being able to do business with that data. So um, I sat, and I may have mentioned this the last time, but I sat in this conference where the Future Music Coalition presented a, a workshop called Metadata for Musicians. And it was about two hours long, and they presented about 30 slides where they said, musicians, you need to upload your data here, 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 and here. And musicians are in the room going, what? Really? Like, how, how would a normal... How, how do I know this? You have iTunes saying, give us your music. You have all these entities saying, just give it to us and we'll distribute it and you'll get money. But when it comes down to it, you haven't taught musicians how to get the money. So I do think that this, how I've aligned us is as a membership organization, because we can evolve with technology now and represent musicians, but give them this archive to keep their data, which yeah. is their credit. Um, we do have this kind of five gigabyte private archive where they can keep contracts or 
submissions to, um, say if they submit to TuneCore, things like records, they can keep records in it and affiliate it with the credit. Um, so at least they have a record and documentation. Yeah. And I think that's the first step in empowering musicians in this new digital world is just helping them organize their stuff. Yeah, so um, if I'm a musician, Christy, if I'm putting out an album, maybe a DIY, you know, I want to go and put it up myself or maybe use a TuneCore or somebody else, but I'm, I'm not signed through a major or, or another label, what would you recommend I do? I've got, let's say, X amount of songs. I've got the data. I know who played on it. I know who wrote it. I know the publishing splits. I know all that stuff. Nobody else does. Where where do I where go? Do I what do I do? The first thing I would do is um, I would go to PermusicDB, and for free, we have what's called a digital musician companion, where I've mapped out, here's all your data, and it, it's Excel spreadsheet, but it auto-populates. We have 10 templates and say, okay, to your DSP, it gets this. To your aggregator, it gets this. To Grace Note, if you want to submit it, it gets this, if they take it. Um, to your mastering engineer, it gets this. It basically has your track level ISRC code, ISWC, and if you don't know what those codes are, you just click on the link and it takes you to the website. Now, ISWCs Beautiful. have to be registered by the IPIs, or yep. uh, the IPIs have to be registered by um, the PROs. But um, that's the first, like, if you just want to put your metadata in one place, just do that. <laughs> like, yeah. it's a free thing. You can archive it and keep it in affiliation. If you were to, you know, become a member and have a, a, a profile with us, then you affiliate that archive to that credit um, and always have that. Now, the, the issue in the industry is where all that data interconnects. Mm -hmm. So, But it's really centered. It's, it's created. The data goes into the chain, in that instance, from the artist. So you, the artist, have to accept responsibility for keeping track of that data once you put it in. Um, and you have to know where it needs to go in order to reap all your reward. So, And that's the big disconnect because... Um, Again, it's the internet fairy concept where it's like, oh, I put it out there, but really do I have to follow up on it? You know, do I need to keep track? Why don't these other companies do that? Um, musicians really need now to accept that no one's doing it for you and you Got have it. to become the business person. So what would I do? I would go to a tune core or a CD baby. You know, you upload it there, but you always have your own record. You have to just be better about keeping your records. Um, yeah. And then you follow up with them every couple of months. I think you can set a minimum. You enter in all your data. Um, they can actually, I think CD Baby can register with a PRO if you're not. Um, but then you have to go to the PRO and make sure that you're, uh, you have your IPI number. Um, if you've ever, if you start creating works from, Let's say you have AKA names, you need to make sure you keep track of what those also known as names are because sure. the PROs don't. They just, you know, they'll give you another IPI number. Um, <laughs> so it's really, you need to kind of become this, like, uh, I hate to say it, but it's like slave to the internet. Of, well, you uh, have to, really like Michael says all the time, you have to educate yourself. You yeah. have to these days. And I, I would imagine that when you go to Pro Music DB, are, is there kind of a FAQ or some kind of glossary to, so people understand, you know, what these numbers mean and what they are and what a PRO is and, you know. That's a good idea. We have a help desk to actually help with the functionality of the system, but um, that's a good idea for us to put those because up there. we, we do deal with this stuff all the time, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we, we know what an ISRC code is and how important it is. or yeah. and it, But I'm wondering, and I, maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems like, Sometimes there's so many things that are needed to release music that they may be overlooked, you know, by, True. say, a musician. No, I, 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 I agree with Jay. I think, you know, even in Jay's example of I'm an artist and I know all of this, I was going to say um, there's probably more cases where you're an artist and you don't have all that information. You don't even know you need to know your splits. You don't even you haven't even discussed that stuff. You're just a band that started somewhere. You recorded a CD and you want to sell it. And no, and, and believe me, there's probably more cases than not where nobody has sat down and talked about the business side of what's going to be done here. Right. And I think that a good res resource on your website of, all right, here's what you need to do before you even do all this stuff. You do need to go figure out who's going to split the songwriting, who's going to do this, what, who, who... 
who is the person you had come in and play the guitar on that one track, even though he's not in the band? You need to, rec you know, I think there needs to be a good resource, educational resource, to instruct the, the artists of what they need. And then the next step is, after you've gathered it all, put it into this database. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good idea. That's kind of what, with the Digital Musician Companion, we geared it towards kind of the indie artist who has a track to it. So they had, you know, here's the here's the 30 entities boiled down into 10, you know, templates. Um, this will work for these couple and this will work for these couple. And I kind of have a reason. I, I go through each line item and define what they are and why. But it's not as a, it probably a, like I could do a lesson or video lesson that would help people um, you know, who, who, who are in need of knowing how to do that. Um, our first focus was probably more in the session musician, like the folks who are even, they're under those people, right, like the folks right. who, the yeah. guitar player that you just referred to. Right. So yeah. in that instance, um, they just want to get credit for the stuff that they've done. Sure. So what we have in our system, which probably isn't available anywhere where else is, for a lot of the prominent session musicians or, or working musicians, you know, they might have, an abstract on Wikipedia that got created along the way, but it's wrong, <laughs> or there's data on it that's wrong. So we have a mechanism that can import that um, that abstract, and they can correct it with us if it's a bio or something like that. Um, we also we've integrated with Music Brains, which um, I was asked why we did that instead of going to IMDb and All Music. Well, our feeling is truly that artists need to own their data, and when we we can kind of transition to talk about blockchain now. Um, yeah. It's true, you, you you don't own your identity on the internet. You don't, as an artist. If all music has your credit information, you don't own that data, they do. <laughs> That's why you can't change it. IMDB, um, they can sell the business tomorrow and, uh, you know, all that data goes away. So, um, or your access to it might go away. Do you work with so, Rovi at all? Well, Rovi is all music. Okay. Um, and... I had talks with them in the beginning, and they they were very interested in us, but they wanted to own the data at the end of the day. They yeah. they, they wanted to be a partner, but not. Well, um, they monetize that, right? Don't they sell that back? They sell that yep. data exactly. They sell the data. Right. So it's not really for a musician's use. So what we're, uh, you know, it's kind of this hybrid concept of you need your own personal archive just for historic purposes. Everyone needs to refer to an archive. But in the current digital world, we can also serve as a validation source uh, with upcoming blockchain technology uh, for musicians because there is no music professional identifier, which yeah. we have. Well, I'm um, glad you brought that up. Let's yeah. let's let's step back for a moment. Blockchain has been in the press a lot. I've, <laughs> I've read a bunch of uh, stories oh. about it. I know uh, people who are proponents of it. Can you? you know, kind of distill it down for someone who maybe hasn't worked with, you know, this area. Sure. What, what is, what is blockchain? What is yeah. And what, why is it important? Um, important. I don't, I don't know that I can answer its importance, but I can tell you what it is. So okay. blockchain is a new technology that's um, been developed that can essentially encapsulate data and it's immutable. So um, once you put something into the blockchain, whatever it is, then that's the building block for all other transactions to take place. So any other, it is like a, a long-term historic record, if you think of it that way. Um, so, of course, anything going into the blockchain needs to be a validated source of data, and which is a huge problem for the music industry right now regarding rights um, and regarding identifying people. Um, so... Blockchain is this kind of great technology for, um, it's, it's called a distributed ledger, but it's a distributed ledger um, because different blocks have different transactions. And you can identify entities that are people as nodes on their computer so that they can call up the data as well. It's not siloed. But in reality, that technology already exists. I mean, say ASCAP gave permissions to us, for instance, to to access some of their data. I mean, it's not, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a different way of doing the same thing. Um, will revolutionize things? I think we're really, really far from it. I think there's a lot of use cases that just 
haven't been even thought of yet. So there's a buzzword right now about it can execute smart contracts like the Ethereum um, blockchain. Um, so if you think of uh, a blockchain being basically a, a minimum, what they call it, a minimum viable data document encapsulated in a block that can then be um, added to as transactions go on as like, you sell a product to this person or whatever. But in each block, there's a certain level of questions that have to be answered in order for the block to release the information. Um, like say if you were to buy something. So everything, you know, are you this person? Are you this person? Is the content here that you, you know, are requesting um, with a lot of other complicated, you know, <laughs> questions? Um, and then it releases the right information. And then you have this person over here and this person over here that kind of say, oh, that happened. And then they create a new block saying that that transaction happened and then it builds upon that. Um, so the two things that I don't think have been thought of as far as the individual use case for musicians. So what if you have three albums of stuff, right? Um, do you create three albums worth of blockchains? Like, or or since there are different blockchain and different blockchain companies and they can individualize what data goes into each one, are musicians then going to have to deal with different blockchain companies? Much like they deal with what they do now, different distributors and trying to get, you know, where do I get the money from? Um, and also the execution of smart contracts. Well, who writes the smart contract? Who, who, who does it? <laughs> you know, who Are they just imaginary contracts that everyone agrees to? Who keeps a record of them? And if you have a discrepancy, who do you go to? Who enforces it? So I think there's essentially blockchain is a big fancy word for a distributed database. So it's still a database. And the permissions are still, um, it's not open unless it's determined the person or the entity creating the blockchain wants it to be open. What's the purpose, Christy? Is it to disintermediate, you know, labels and <sighs> other partners? Is this supposed well, to be kind no, of a I, DIY thing? I I think the purpose of it has yet to be found. Um, I think that the way that the music industry works right now, um, I don't know that blockchain is a is a viable technology for them to to pursue. I think it's a long way down the road if they do. There's too many contracts. Like I said, it, blockchain right now might be applicable for the ending musician who's frustrated that they really put their money or they put their music into an atmosphere of the internet and they can't make any money on it. Um, and they want to pursue a new technology that allows them direct um, Is to that fan for transparency so they can see where, I think so, yeah. where the money goes? Um, and with this, a, go ahead. Yeah, I, um, so Ujo Music is a an example of this. I think you've probably heard about Imogene Heaps put her money on sure, or sure. put her music up in yeah, the blockchain. Been very vocal. Well, but no one's really had the use case end game result of what that experiment, you know, revealed. So the company that um, has that experiment up, it's called Ujo Music, U U J O Music dot com, and it has a page for Imogene Heaps um, one track. So it was interesting. I went to that site, and you know, Imogene actually signed up for Promusia DB, by the way. <laughs> so um, she's uh, and wrote me a very nice note about what we're doing. Um, I think for an artist, an indie artist wanting to explore a new way of direct um, direct access of fans to their music, it's it's taking the shackles off of a label. However. The, the musician then takes on the responsibility of marketing the track. Um, when I looked up on Ujo Music, that track, um, $133. So it's only made $133 according to what I saw, um, which is very visible on that um, site. Um, so the marketing, the um, the fan uh, connection is still all up to the artist, I think. And so if they want to look at blockchain as this, you know, Oh, it's my savior because I'm going to make all my money. Well, <laughs> you still have to be responsible for all the marketing around that and all the performing that you have to put into that. And um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't, piece. yeah, I don't, it, I don't know that it's this kind of revelation or you know revolutionary type of technology that um, I think it's a diversion from the real problem the industry has is to validating data. <laughs> you know, like yeah. the getting to the basic core of who played what. And who wrote what 
and what the right contract is for the rights, that is still a basic <clears throat> challenge for our industry to agree upon. Yeah. And so when you talk about blockchain, whoever starts that first blockchain says this information is valid for all time. What if you get something wrong in that first block? Yeah. What if you misspelled somebody's name? I mean, it's not it's not the internet fairy. Someone still has to put put be put on the line for mm -hmm. this information that I'm putting in here, whether it be a publisher or sure, a label. We find mistakes all the time. Exactly. It might be somebody with the exact same name, but not that same person. We've seen right. it all. So the delivery mechanism might be different. Like it might be great because it's a different it's not itunes and it's not spotify and so you can deliver music in these blocks um, like individual digital tracks so for that purpose it might be interesting um to kind of get ownership back but you still need to define who's the who's the source to start that block you know in right. the, um, yeah, you know you know, t t technology is never the end solution Technology is always going to end up being only as good as the data that the technology uses. Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. And 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 you know, as you were you were hitting on, people are so desperate to want that magic bullet. I just want the magic bullet that will fix everything. Yep. That doesn't exist. That will never <laughs> exist. This is an industry that is that is decades old that has gone through so much change in its entire lifespan i mean it started out with selling 45s out of the back of the trunk of cars you know so it's a business that has evolved dramatically and that data as you said is so important and if you don't have the right data if you don't have the right information it doesn't matter what the great shiny new bell and whistle is of this week. Yep. Yeah. So I think the challenge moving ahead is how do, how does an industry connect more with its artists and um, with the working musicians who, like you said, just, you know, they, like me, you know, I do my own thing for a lot of other people. And then, you know, I have one album of my own, you know? Um, so how, but that's the vision of, what who people make the people that make a living like the biggest part of Spotify or the biggest part of what's on you know Napster now it's probably a lot of indie music um, because people can do that it's not like their full time thing well I mean it's our full time thing but we do different eclectic things within the music business that make up our our life and um, the music industry has to find a way to connect on that level it's not about big name artists anymore um, it's not about the industry is not about um, the stars of the world. Um, it's about providing like all these tools that indie musicians can use to put their music into the food chain. Um, but in order for them to make any money, they, they have to be educated and empowered on what they need to do. And um, if they don't want their stuff on Spotify, because even, you know, if they say, I get a million plays, the attitude is they just won't even try it because they've heard such bad things about it when actually Spotify pays more than YouTube, but yet they'll throw things Much. up on YouTube all the time. Right. Right. <laughs> um, they'll throw things up on YouTube. Um, so it, there's this huge education process that the industry really left out as far as educating gra granular level musicians. And I also put the responsibility on you know, the PROs and, um, and the unions, you know, they didn't, they're not up to speed with what's going on in technology, unfortunately. So blockchain technology, if, if uh, musicians are looking to their member organizations, and this is sad, to educate them on what's coming, they're really going to be at a loss. So I feel that's why there's such a need for us to not to be more than a database, but an organization that can kind of facilitate this kind of um, understanding of what's going on and be on kind of the heartbeat of what's happening out there. I don't know that we necessarily want to take on being responsible for, you know, who gets paid what, um, that's not really our job to execute contracts, but we can educate musicians on how to organize their data because data is the future. Um, and that's how you who, get paid, right? If yeah. you, if you, right. Yeah. 
being owning the virtual you. I, I watched this TED talk on um, blockchain uh, recently where he says, you don't own the virtual you. It's true. So musicians need to own the virtual you first. <laughs> and then you identify, you attribute the you to your work. And that is how um, owning that and corralling that in one place um, creates an archive, which is what we're about, but also helps you do business better. And that's kind of what we set up PermusiaDB to do. And it's kind of this hard thing to get people to wrap their head around. Yeah. But there's so much that artists need to understand. Um, we're just at the beginning of it. Sure. Yeah. Who are your evangelists? I mean, who's who's helping you? Are you involved with Nam or you know the artist formerly known as Narm? You know the music <laughs> business, and I mean, are you involved? Well, we've had- I imagine right. There's got to be some other people who could help, kind of, you know, spread the gospel. So to well, speak. we just you know, we just launched two weeks ago. Um, we have you know a couple of Grammy winners that have you know come on board. Um, where I've wanted to roll out the company as we're looking for founding artists now it's not it's not just about you know oh let's just join something else um and it's not for free um because we're a member organization and um and you're talking about pro music db pro music db.org so we're a membership organization it is it is tax deductible (laughs) um and we will provide data services for musicians so they get a profile um and we provide data services for a fee should they want us to look all, all over the internet and find out what's out about them and put it into their profile. So that's the first step, you know, like owning the you that is out there. You know, all music has bad credits. What are they? Let's correct them. Um, IMDB has wrong credits. What are they or doesn't have everything? Let's put them on there, you know. Um, so it's just basically ground level for whatever comes next preparation is always good so preparing your data like you prepare your music before you release an album you you organize for a couple months and before you record the songs and then you have to master blah 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 sure so we're kind of helping the business part you know organizing the data so evangelist wise like the the los angeles local here has really been a great um support for us uh the union so i do have to say that um i've been a little challenged by the national union um We've gone to them and said, hey, we'd like to run a story or here's what we're doing. And um, there's been a lot of other contractual things they've been dealing with. So we really haven't gotten any. um, (laughs) uh, I hope that they'll kind of come around and support us. But having that support on a national level would be would be key um, for the because musicians need it and i think the organizations need to get involved so it's a process the music library association has been a great support because at the end of the day at the end of the day if we don't perpetuate the music profession forward which is kind of what libraries do music libraries and um information about uh musicians if we don't perpetuate that and create the vehicle that can perpetuate that forward then no one will know what anyone did, and it'll think. Well, you know, you can't you can't get five guys to agree on where to go to lunch, let alone right. what what data should be right. the data. How are you How are you kind of rounding people up to actually agree on what fields should be populated? Well, we went we went with the DNX schema, but then we also went um, we went through like Discogs, All Music, IMDb, and then we analyzed them against the DNX schema. So. Um, we're basically a credits resource, so we have we're kind of what we call the intersection between how musicians think of themselves and how the industry thinks of them, and that's a big, it's a big hurdle to get over because what we found is that say in the DDEX, uh, what we call the standard DDEX roles, um, there's only 99 roles in the DDEX schema for musicians, and one of them is well not even for musicians for everyone, um, and for musicians it's studio musician. <laughs> producer um composer or lyricist there's no song and that's probably field. enough for like a maybe green day but maybe not for Mannheim steamroller right or, or a classical or jazz exactly. thing so but you take the music library association who we've incorporated their instrument list of 817 your musicians want credit as what they did i'm a guitar no, player I'm not of just course a, right? so you have to so what we do in our system is you say your role the ddx role but then you have the instrument from the library of congress so we can get granular like that so um, we have standards in place, but we also can effectuate 
change within DDEX and Library of Congress roles to get those more to align with how musicians think of themselves and how the industry has to adjust, I think, these standards that have been created without musician input. Um, you know, to have a role, to not have a songwriter role in the DDEX scheme is kind of crazy to me. <laughs> it's like, you know, to have, you know, and I understand from a like ASCAP or BMI or publisher standpoint, who was probably who they who they asked when we they who they got input from. You know, what do you call you know contractually? How do you divvy it up? And composer is this, and lyricist is this. So I get that, but in a world where you're expecting artists to participate in these standards and implement these standards and how they and how they conduct business, um, you need to be able to adjust your language a little bit so that they feel like they're included, you know, that, yeah. that, that their, you know, their role has been identified. Um, and yeah. so that I think, and I think that'll actually help clear up a lot of the data issue because if you, if someone has a role as a studio musician, um, but they sang, um, they're on a different contract than the musician contract. They're with sag after they're not on an AFM contract, if at all. So I think, there's room to kind of add to um, the DDX standard by having artist involvement yeah. um, because that's what you're asking artists to put all this data and to be aware. You're just, it's like, Oh, you need to get educated, but <laughs> who does it? You know, right. who, who, who has done it? So anyway, that's, yeah. we're kind of well, filling this little hole. Let me, let me ask you a question. I ran into this with a client recently. I, I didn't realize that just in the metadata uh, like, for example, when you're putting a track and you say, this features this musician or, you know, guest artist, this musician, sometimes those things can actually affect the payouts. Yes. And yes. I wasn't really aware of that. And I wonder how many people are aware of that, that you have to do your homework. You have to know what those things mean. You can't just say, hey, this is Jay Gilbert's new track featuring my buddy Michael Brandvold because that may affect – you know the the splits and the payouts that that's if it was a registered say if it's registered on a legit contract you know by the union or it might affect their splits um that they put down at, at the ascap bmi level um you know if i'm featured artist i get more of the the writing than you do or something um so it does affect but in contractual language at the union level yes you do have featured artists um rates are different than say studio you know studio rates so um that does affect more like the, the back-end secondary market fund um payment payouts so yeah but but if it's not documented anywhere then good luck you know yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't go after the fact and say oh i did this and then call the union up and say well you know i did this can you do something for me what are they going to do i mean they yeah. didn't have a record of it they can't prove it was you yeah. and then we're you know the circle the cycle keeps continuing. Yeah. Well, well, Christy, look, th this conversation has been fascinating. I always <laughs> learn something whenever you and I get together for lunch or chat. It's, it's uh, mind numbing. I just, I'm a musician. I, what am I doing? Well, I feel like we're just kind of scratching the surface. We'd love to talk to you again, and and please keep us up to date on your. It sounds like you're making some pretty good progress. Yes, Pro you know? Music TV has launched. We're open for founding artist members. Our open enrollment closes November 30th. Um, we're doing that. Where can people? Is it just pro promusictv.net? Promusictv.org. Promusictv.org. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to watch an informational webinar, um, there is a link. If you go to our Facebook page, you can um, click on the link on our Facebook page. If you want to see a full demo, um, that's there to, to see what's inside the site and how you can affiliate everything to everything else. Um, if you go to permisadb.org, you can download that Digital Musician Companion. There's a um, uh, If you sign up for the webinar uh, on our site, which is uh, – down to the bottom right underneath the Facebook logo. It says webinar sign up. You can get the Digital Musician Companion for free. Um, awesome. awesome. Just right there. Great. So. Keep up the great work, Christy. Good thank stuff. Thank you, Christy. Thank you for, the, <laughs> okay, thank you for coming back course. with the update. Thanks. We'll talk soon, I hope. You All guys right. have All a right. good week. Okay. Hey, take care. All right, Christy. Take Bye. care. Good Bye -bye. seeing you. Uh, I love getting that update. I was all, I was wondering what was going on with Pro Music DB, so I'm glad yeah. to see they launched. I'm glad to see they're moving forward here. Um, you know, I would encourage everybody to go over and check it out. Check out the website. Check out the webinar. Absolutely. Um, you know, data is so important. The document. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't 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 rely on everybody else to do it for you to watch out for you because um, they're not. 
It's your yeah. career, it's your music. You have to be solely responsible for for what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really good discussion. I may have to go through it again and take some more notes because there's so much information there and um at the end of the day, you know, you have to mind the store. You have to take care of the stuff because it's not just a matter of aesthetics. It can it it's a matter, can matter of money. It's a matter paid, of money. Right? Yeah, you may or may not get paid based on what you're 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 keeping track of, what you've recorded, what you've submitted, and after the fact is too late. And and you know, you can't count on iTunes or you can't count on TuneCore or C D baby to let you know, oh hey, um, it would be in your best interest to do this. They're not that's not their job. No. It's your job. It's your job. It's your job to know what you should be doing. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, go check out Pro, promusicdb.org. That's Do it. it. Till next week, Music Biz Weekly. We're out of here. See you guys.